Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. That greeting said to early Christians as they greeted each other, Christ is risen. He has risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everyone should have a prop for today. We have bells, as is the tradition here. Every time you hear a hallelujah today, you can go ahead and ring your bell and ring them nice and loud. Should we try that one more time? Because first service was pretty awake. And they were ringing bells like crazy. Hallelujah. There we go. Just a few announcements this morning. Welcome to Central Lutheran as we celebrate this holy Easter and a special welcome to those who are also watching online. We are so glad that you are here joining us this morning. You will find in your bulletin an Easter flower memorial. These are all of the Easter flowers that were purchased in memory of someone. So we give thanks to those and um, pray for those who are given um, for the memorial. On Wednesday, April 3rd, it will be the last day to buy Mother's Day baskets. Our youth here at Central Lutheran are selling beautiful flower baskets um, delivered here the day before Mother's Day to help raise money for their summer trips. You can buy flowers after service. All money and orders are due by April 3rd, and they will be picked. you can pick them up here on May 11th. So you just drive right outside that Saturday, and they will um, pick them up pretty easy. They're really gorgeous from what I hear, um, and it's a great way to help our youth. The last announcement I have this morning is if you have a young one, you are a young one, or you are young at heart, I do hope that you grabbed, were able to grab a little kid's bag on the way in. There's a couple snacks in there and some coloring just to help them celebrate Easter. And if you missed it, they are still out there in the lobby, so you can go grab one if, if you need to. With that, let's stand for our gathering hymn, The Day of Resurrection.
Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the wellspring of grace, our Easter and our joy. Amen. Amen. Look, here is water. Here is our water. Hallelujah. Immersed in the promises of baptism, let us give thanks for what God has done for us. We give thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your voice thundered over the deep, and water became the essence of life. Adam and Eve beheld Eden's verdant rivers. The ark carried your creation through the flood into a new day. Miriam led the dancing as your people passed through the sea into freedom's land. In a desert pool, the Ethiopian official entered your boundless baptismal life. Look, here is our water. At the river, your beloved son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By the baptism of Jesus' death and resurrection, you opened the floodgates of your reconciling love, freeing us to live as Easter people. We rejoice with glad hearts, giving all honor and praise to you through the risen Christ, our source of living water, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Look, here is our water. Here is our water of life. Hallelujah. The Lord be with you. O oh God, you give your only Son to suffer death on the cross for our redemption, and by his glorious resurrection, you delivered us from the power of death. Make us die every day to sin, that we may live with him forever in the joy of resurrection. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Our first reading today is from the book of Acts. 
Peter began to speak to the people. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him in the tree. But God, promised him, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Be to God. The second reading is from the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15. Now I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaimed to you, which you in turn received, in which you also you stand, through which also you are being saved. If you hold firmly to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain. For I handed on to you as of first importance what I in turn had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, then to the twelve. Then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, although some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. For I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his grace toward me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is with me. Whether then it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you are able. reading from Mark, the 16th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? And when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who is crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go. Tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. At this time, I invite those who are young or young at heart to come up for our children's message. <laughs> Come on up and stand up and talk. 
You can stand up, you can stay standing up. You can go on the other side too. You can wrap around here. You can go on the other side. You might don't want to be in front of the baptismal front. Can you keep scooting down, keep scooting down, keep scooting down. Hi, Otto. <laughs> Do you want to stand by mommy? Okay. So I'm going to have you all stand up. So good morning and happy Easter. <laughs> so to start our lesson off, we're going to pretend to go on a journey as the women at the tomb. So this is to the tune of we're going on a bear hunt. So I'm hoping you know that, but I'm going to call it we're going on a Jesus hunt. <laughs> so you're going to repeat the words and you can do the actions as well. Are you ready? We're going on a Jesus hunt. Going on a Jesus hunt. We ought to go find him. Ought to go find him. We're not scared. We're not scared. It's been three days. It's been three days. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Thank you. A tomb. A tomb. The stone's been rolled away. The stone's been rolled away. We can't go over it. Can't go over it. We can't go under it. We can't go under it. We've got to go through it. We've got to go through it. So step, 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 step. But guess what? Jesus is not here. All right, you can go ahead and take a seat. So, as the women were walking to the tomb, they had a basket probably like this one. And they had spices in there because they were going to go to where Jesus was buried and put the spices as a way to honor him and honor what he had done, to honor to his body. Remember, his body wasn't working anymore. His body was dead. So as they were walking, they were talking. Did anybody catch what I read about what they said on the way to Jesus' tomb? It's a hard question. Did you catch her? Who's gonna open it? There was just three women and this big, large rock. Do you think that they could open it by themselves? No, no they couldn't. Oh, you think they could? Well, women are pretty strong, aren't they? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but as they were walking, they couldn't figure it out. And what happened? If you think about a big rock like this, and I'm gonna let you guys pick a rock. Mateo, can you have everyone pick a rock? Can you have everyone pick a rock, hold the basket? And we'll walk down the line. Thank you. Everyone's gonna pick a rock, and you can keep the rock. But our rock, this rock, is a reminder of the stone in front of Jesus' tomb, and that the women they underestimated God, and they underestimated the power of God because they were thinking it was going to be too hard to open it. And when they got there, what was there? Did they have to move the big tomb, and the, or the big rock in front of the tomb? No, it was already moved. God moved it. And sometimes we have rocks that we carry that are hard things in our lives, and we forget that God can help us with that. So this rock, I want you to take it home, and I want it to be a reminder that when you have something hard in your life, and you don't think that God can help you, and God can work with you, and that there is a God that loves you so, so much, you can hold this rock, and you can re be reminded of God's love and how powerful God is. Okay? Can you do that? Do you ever underestimate God and think, God can't help me with that? Do you? Do you guys do that? I do that. I'm not afraid to raise my hand. So this rock is going to be our reminder. 
So as you finish getting them, we're going to hold the rock in our hands. And we're going to say a prayer with our rocks. I know, picking pretty rocks is really hard. It's a hard, hard thing. All right. We're going to go ahead and pray while everyone else, while the rest of the line, there's only a couple more people. So let's go ahead and put our heads together. Ready? Dear God, thank you so much for your son. And thank you for raising him from the dead. We pray for this rock in our hands that it can be a reminder of your power and love. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, we talked about the moving of the tomb, or moving of the stone and how hard that was, but I forgot the most important part. The most important part of God's love and power is what? The empty tomb that Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. All right, you can go back to your seat. Thank you. Yeah, you can keep it. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Grace and peace to you from God and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Let's try that again. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> and amen. What a holy day it is as we celebrate this risen Christ. Today is a day for hallelujahs. I'll tell you what I told the first service. I didn't actually write all those hallelujahs in my sermon just to make you bell, ring bells, but we could do that anyways. Today is a day for hallelujahs, for remembering and celebrating the core identity of our beliefs that Christ died on the cross for the sin of, sins of all, was put into a tomb, and was resurrected on the third day. Through this, we gain God's grace and forgiveness, that we are redeemed with God because of what happened on the cross. Death has no grip on us anymore. We are not afraid. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. One of the joys and struggles of preaching on holy days is writing something new or trying to give new ideas and new birth to a story that some people have heard many times. But here is the great thing about God's word. We can hear the same thing over and over again, but with God's word, every time we read it is an opportunity and an invitation to hear or read something different, to see a new perspective and come at it with a new imagination. One verse may speak to us one day and not the next. A story can tug at our hearts during a certain season of our life, but not another. When I became a mother to my second born, I was Tired, overworked as a teacher, and lost as a mom, lost into what God had called me in, and I found the book of Esther. I read her story over and over again as I thought about her courage and how she lived out her faith no matter where she was. The story gave me hope and a reminder that God calls us in all situations, and that I was called as a mother to love my kids and to love them as God loved me. But here's the thing about God's work. Reading that now does not speak to me the same way anymore. Things change with days and seasons of our life. It spoke so eloquently to me then, but not the same anymore. And it's my hope today that even though you have heard this Easter gospel before, that you come at it with new ears, a new imagination, and a new heart. As I read this week's text in preparation for the sermon, God spoke to me in a new way, and I saw God's word in a new way. After reading this 
gospel for the umpteenth time, something spoke to me. Now, something that I knew, but kind of stuck out to me this time, that the resurrected Jesus isn't in the text. And that is one way that this gospel message is set apart from the other gospels of Matthew, Luke, and John. Sure, his name is there, but he's not physically in that story. And how fitting, the tomb is empty, Jesus isn't there. And I knew this story well. I knew that the women go running from the empty tomb. But to me, as I read it over and over again, it always felt like Jesus was there. And that's probably because of all the other Gospels. It wasn't until I read it that umpteenth time that it kind of occurred to me that, hmm, he wasn't there. There's no walking with two travelers on the road to Emmaus. Jesus isn't showing up as a resurrected Christ behind locked doors to his disciples. And in this gospel, the resurrected Christ isn't meeting Mary in the garden. He's just gone. And it leaves us with this little bit of a cliffhanger. The angel told the woman at the tomb who had come to anoint his body, to honor his body with these spices, that Jesus was not there, that he is raised from the dead, and he was going ahead of them to Galilee. And that was it. They left with terror, amazement, and ran. To some, that might leave us feeling unsatisfied this Easter, or maybe we're uncomfortable with the fact that in this gospel, in the ending, there's no seeing that resurrected Christ. I can imagine that this uncomfort or unsatisfied feeling might be how the disciples felt at this time, and maybe even the women in our gospel. Uncomfort, unknowing, what is going on, what is going on with this ministry, and what happened to this man that I have followed. The disciples deserted Jesus a couple chapters back in this gospel after Jesus was arrested in the garden. All of them deserted and fled probably feeling terrified, afraid, not knowing what's coming next, just as the woman, after hearing the young man, felt. My reading of this gospel and this realization that Jesus wasn't there in all, that physical resurrected body wasn't there, made me think about all the times when we assume Jesus isn't around when we need him. Much like the women didn't think that Jesus was alive and there to help, like when they walked up to the tomb, talking about how they were going to move that heavy stone, but yet not talking about or praying to God about how they could move that stone. But Jesus is there. He was there. He is here. He is all around, in our midst, going ahead of us. And there is a promise to meet us in the future, just like our Mark Gospel. And I realize that no matter how many times I can say that Jesus is in fact there and here, there in our times and our lives where we feel like he isn't, maybe those times when we feel abandoned, he is. And I know that's hard to take. When I was discerning my call into ministry, there was a time when I felt completely abandoned by God. I felt alone, like I was stuck in this valley with tall, treacherous mountains all around me. And no matter where I went, or where I walked, there was going to be a struggle. It was in that time I felt like giving up. I felt like this call that I had spent time and effort into discerning was dead. Jesus wasn't there. There was no life around, and I was lonely in the midst of this. And it it was as I was making up this as my mind that this part of my life was no more, that this was a dead end, Jesus reminded me that he goes ahead. That there is a way when I feel like there is no way. And that's much like the women at our reading today. They went to the tomb knowing that Jesus was dead, with feelings of disappointment, thinking that that was the end, the end of ministry. The women had given up. They had forgotten about God's power. And they came with their spices. Don't many of us approach this struggle the same way? As I just struggled with my discernment, I felt alone, and I had metaphorically shown up to the grave of this part of my life with spices to honor its ending. 
I think we all do that. We feel that God is not with us on something, that Jesus isn't there, that God is not working in the midst of all of it. We're ready to give up. We show up with spices ready for it to be finished. We show up not knowing how we're going to push a boulder by ourselves in some direction, a rock of our troubles. We just want to go somewhere with that problem, but we can't do it by ourselves. We try to manage the weight of the heaviness in our lives, and we underestimate God's love and power. There's a burden sometimes thinking that you come to your tomb with you weighing it down, your life would change for the worse. But yet, that's not really true, is it? Our text reminds us that Jesus goes ahead. The Spirit is at work whether you know it or not. And that, yes, sometimes we do underestimate God. And I'm not going to stand up here and say that everything is going to be shiny and happy all the time. Because it's not. Maybe you're still trying to figure out how to carry a burden, roll the stone towards a better outcome. Maybe a hurt isn't gone or isn't resolved. There are things that happen in our life that tear us down and destroy us. And sometimes we just never underestimate those things. But even in the midst of hurt and pain or the things or the people we have to say goodbye to, there is Jesus. The good news this morning is that there is a love so great for us, and that is in the Son of God, the resurrected Savior. There is hope in Jesus, even in the darkness. Jesus goes ahead of us. That is the good news. The women showed up to the tomb, were met with the angel, and said that Jesus was ahead of them, not gone. The power of God, the power of God's love and grace and mercy are always here, even if we doubt it and even if we can't see it. There is a hope and a joy that comes with Jesus, <coughs> that comes with resurrection, in its knowing and getting to experience God's love for us through a crucified and resurrected Christ. It's knowing that no matter what the color of your skin, your background, what color kind of car you drive or what clothes you wear, it's knowing that no matter what you've done in the past or what known or unknown battles you deal with, that God is there. That there is a God who loves you, my beloved, so much that God's Son died for us. This resurrection gives us grace for these things that weigh us down. These heavy stones and the heavy tombs that we carry around, the ones in which we feel like we're forgotten. Those are not ours to carry alone. That when we feel alone and abandoned or completely uncomfortable, when we think that Jesus isn't there, Jesus is. This resurrection gives us hope and grace to know that we are covered, our sin is covered, and grace, love, mercy abound with our faith. This Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday, this Easter Sunday, I hope and pray that you are reminded that Jesus goes ahead. Jesus went ahead of the three women at the tomb. Jesus went ahead and made his, met his disciples. Jesus goes ahead of us in our life, and death is stripped of our power. There is nothing that we will endure or a place that we go to or heavy rocks that we carry that cannot be met with the grace and love of Jesus. There's no place that Jesus isn't there. We celebrate today with joy, knowing that we are covered in love, that we are covered in grace, that even when we feel like Jesus isn't around, he is. Jesus is going ahead of us, knowing completely who we are. Reminder that our choices are ours, but his love is greater than our choices. And with the faith that we have in God, we choose to love. So today, go away from your place of death and of endings, a place of tombs and spices, and let this be a day to return to life and a new beginning. Christ is risen, and this is only the beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, Son of God. Christ is risen. He is Alleluia. And amen. Please stand for our hymn, Now All the Fault of Heaven.
Living together in trust and hope, we are bold to say, I believe in God, the Father only, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church, the world, and all those in need of good news. Holy God, we pray for the body of Christ, the church. Where the church is persecuted, protect it. Where the church is privileged, grant it humility. Where the church is fractured, heal it. Guide us to embody Christ's love in the world. Risen Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Life-giving God, we pray for the earth. Join our prayers with branches lifted in praise and roaring waters of new life, that together we proclaim Easter hope. Risen Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Merciful God, we pray for all peoples and nations, free oppressed communities from occupation, exploitation, and abuse. Teach leaders your way of justice. Empower peacemakers and all who work to end violence and strife. Risen Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Liberating God, we pray for people everywhere who long for good news. Roll away the stones that keep people from living with dignity and wholeness. Breathe new life and hope into people struggling to make it through each day. Risen Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for this community of faith and for your spirit in our midst. Feed us at your Easter table and fill us with your wisdom that we serve and care for others. Bless visitors among us today, those celebrating Easter with friends and family, and those who travel during this holiday time. Risen Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love, through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And all of us with you.
invite you to stand as you are able as the offering will come forward. Let us pray. Risen one, you call us to believe and bear fruit. May the gifts that we offer here be signs of your abiding love. From us to be your witnesses, form us to be witnesses in, your, in the world through Jesus Christ, our true vine. Amen. Blessed are you, O Lord God of the universe, for your mercy is everlasting, your faithfulness endures from age to age. Praise to you for the creating of the heavens and the earth. Praise to you for saving the earth from the waters of the flood. Praise to you for bringing the Israelites safely through the sea. Praise to you for leading your people through the wilderness to the land of milk and honey. Praise to you for the words and deeds of Jesus, your anointed, Praise to you for the death and resurrection of Christ. Praise to you for your spirit poured out upon all nations. For it was on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took a cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it to all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. For with this bread and cup, we remember the Lord's Passover from death to life as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. O God of the resurrection and new life, reveal yourself to us in the breaking of the bread. Raise us up as the body of Christ in the world. Breathe new life into us and send us forth burning with justice, peace, and love. 
Amen. Lord, remember us in your kingdom as you teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be, <clears throat> may be seated. Um, just a quick word of instruction. Uh, communion is open to all who come to the table. It's Christ's table who invites us. Um, the ushers will release you by the side aisle where you can come up um, and take a cup. Uh, there are grape juice on the top of the old cabinet. Otherwise, take an empty cup. Come and join us around the altar. You can either kneel or stand, whichever you're most comfortable. We'll receive the bread and the wine will be poured, and then you can return to your seat by the center aisle. If you need gluten-free, you can let us know. We have that available as well. Uh, and if you need us to bring communion back to you, uh, we can do that at the end of the talk. Come, for all has been made ready this day.
Please stand as you are able. And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in eternal life. Amen. Let us pray. Shepherding God, you have prepared a table before us and nourished us with your love. Send us forth from this banquet to proclaim your goodness and share the abundant mercy of Jesus, our Redeemer and friend. Amen. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. May the God of resurrection power, Christ of unending joy, and the spirit of Easter hope bless you now and always. Amen. Amen. We sing our closing hymn, Jesus Christ is Risen Today. Rejoice and be glad. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah.